Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where today, Violent Pizza 25 here is going to be showing off the Gorilla 15, the German Tier 10 tank destroyer, in a Tier 10 standard battle here on the Corellia map. Normally at the start of the battle I talk a bit about the machine that our hero is driving, but I just want to talk about how hilariously impractical <laughs> the Gorilla 15 is. I mean, obviously it never existed. Um, you know, it's got a 150mm gun mounted on a chassis that would struggle to handle an 88mm gun. And they put the fighting, well, compartment, even though it isn't actually a compartment, as far back as they can in order to try to counterbalance the massive weight of that gun sticking out over the front of the tank. With a front-mounted engine as well, and almost, well, not almost, basically zero counterbalance at the back, near the breech. So, this thing would be fun to fire and drive, but of course it never existed, which is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what-if designs, but, um, yeah. Oh, an IS-7. And all you did was blow these tracks off. Oh, well, never mind. So, yes, 150mm gun. There were blueprints for this thing, by the way. It's not a complete work of fiction. Um... It was originally supposed to have either the 128mm gun that you get on the Yag target. Actually, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Or a 150mm howitzer. There were, however, also at least plans for this gun. Which is not a howitzer, it's a 150mm gun with 63 calibre barrel length. I mean, the... The 128mm anti-tank gun on the Jag Tiger was ridiculous enough and capable of defeating anything. Why they felt the need to put a 150mm anti-tank gun on something a quarter the size and weight of the Jag Tiger <laughs> is beyond me. But, well, that was just German weapons technology for you in the second half of World War II. Everything had to be bigger and more expensive. Which made sense to a degree, because they were never going to be able to compete with the Allies on quantity, so they pretty much had to go for quality, but they already had quality. They had the three best anti-tank guns of the world. The 75mm Pac-40, which wasn't the biggest anti-tank gun in the world, but it was small, and its small size was one of its biggest advantages. Oh, you can see, he knows that's exactly where the enemy tank destroyers are going to be, so he's taking a couple of speculative shots up there. But yes, the fact that the 75mm Pac-40 wasn't the biggest anti-tank gun in the world meant that it could be physically manhandled by its crew. It was a struggle, but you didn't have to have a truck to cart this thing around. And it was also very easily hidden for ambushes. And of course the Flak 88, which was technically an anti-aircraft gun, it just turned out to be really, really good in the anti-tank role. And then of course the Pac-43, the anti-tank gun version of the Tiger II's 88mm gun arguably the best anti-tank gun in the world at the time it was introduced, capable of killing anything. Fortunately, at the time it was introduced, Germany was running out of fuel and steel, and it weighed three tons and it needed a truck. <laughs> so. But, yeah, I mean, they were at least reasonable compared to the 128mm monster on the Jagdtiger and the 150mm work of fiction that's mounted on the Gorilla 15. In case you're wondering, Violent Pizza has noticed that the other flank is about to crumble and he's heading back to do something about it. Hopefully the rest of the team over here, because they are losing quite badly, are not going to continue to push into a very strong enemy position. They should be waiting for the enemy to push into them, but we'll cross our fingers and see how that works. 128mm gun on the uh, Yag Tiger, by the way was technically not an anti-tank gun, it was a naval gun. Such as it was in 1944, had a whole bunch, well they didn't have a whole bunch of destroyers sitting around not doing anything. Um, most of them had been destroyed by HMS Warspite in the Second Battle of Narvik, but the few destroyers that they had remaining were basically sitting around doing nothing. Most of the crews had been sent off to fight as infantry, and so the guns were stripped out, and these were the guns that were fitted to the first Yag Tigers. Oh, that was a 
Um, yes, uh, the, not all Yak Tigers had these 128 millimetre guns, because they didn't have an awful lot of them lying around, because they didn't have an awful lot of destroyers left to strip the guns off. So, the second batch of Yak Tigers produced had the Pack 43 88 millimetre anti tank gun, which was a really, really, really good anti hose missed again. That's really unfortunate. Is that K91 PT AFK or something? Because he's just sitting there in the open. I mean, he's got his front towards the enemy, but he's not moving. Oh no, he is moving. He's not AFK. He's just sitting in the open, waiting to be outflanked. Probably blaming the team. And Violet Peter... No, third time, unlucky. Still can't land a hit. On... What even is that thing? The BZ-17... I've never even heard of it. I... Honestly, I gave up trying to keep track of all of the new tanks being introduced into this game a long time ago because when the world of tanks wiki page itself can't even keep up <laughs> right and it can't oh and there goes the game oh he finally gets a hit look at that nearly kills it if only one of those previous shots had landed oh and there's the k91 in chat noob team again i mean that might be true but it, it, it doesn't help saying it also Bold words from somebody who just sat in the open, waiting to be outflanked. But if just one of those three previous shots had hit, the made-up Chinese Tier 8 premium heavy tank would have been... Wow, it, that was high explode. Well, yeah, that's the thing about the Gorilla 15. It basically has no armor. Premium high explosive. That really hurt. I thought it was useful to stop and actually look up the details on that new Chinese Tier 8 premium. Tier 8, yeah? It has a 160mm gun. <laughs> it's got a bigger gun than the German Tier 10 tank destroyer. Yeah. Um, and of course this information wasn't on the World of Tanks wiki page because that struggles to keep up with all of the shit that Wargaming keeps shoveling into World of Tanks. And if the wiki page can't keep up, well, why should I bother? Even though I just did. Now the team are actually losing quite badly here. They're still four kills down, but this is the critical moment because while the rest of the team over there on the east had the sense to not try to push into those strong enemy positions, now that some of them are coming back to defend the cap, this is when the enemy are pushing into what remains. So if they can hold on, that would be great. Hello, somebody's in the cap circle. Oh, hello, Mr. T44. Goodbye, Mr. T44. <laughs> well, that was nice. Uh, that's Violet Peter's first actual kill. Thank you, by the way, to the... Oh, shit. Can we get a shot into him? Thank you. Right, now you're dead. <laughs> Thank you again to the CS-52, without whose assistance that would have been a very, very tricky situation. Second kill. Three and a half thousand damage. Okay. Uh, we don't really need anybody else other than this CS-52 back here. Now, it is just a medium. But there's plenty of cover there for you. So if that guy could just yep, spot targets, that's fantastic. Went to the high explosive shell there from the Cobra. I suppose the Cobra may have loaded high explosive because he thought he was hunting a Gorilla 15 and just a Gorilla 15. Haha, -ha, surprise, there's a medium tank here as well. The medium tank who unfortunately, while we weren't looking at him, appeared to take a bit of a spanking and is now down to half health. It's important... Ooh, the team's managed to kill the IS-7. That's good. But it's very important that that CS-52 just stays alive and spots targets. Because as long as he's here, they can't push into this cap circle. At least not from this side. From the other side of the map, however... Hmm. Yeah. Um, they, they probably are going to be able to start pushing into this cap circle very, very, very soon, because the only thing left alive over there is the SU-130PM. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Oh, that's really bad. He got the shot at the Cobra, but it was at the turret roof, and it was at such a sharp angle that the shot just skipped right off. And now the CS-52 is dead, the SU-130PM is alone against, well, everything. He's managed to get a kill, he's taken out the Conway, but that's probably all he's going to be able to do. Violent Pizza trying to get over there and at least get some kills on the enemy tanks that are busy stomping the SU-130PM to death, but nope, too slow. What's the Cobra up to? Because he can't leave the Cobra at his back. There he is. Gives it just enough aiming time in order to guarantee the kill. Nails the Cobra. Oh, there's the BZ-176. Who fired? 
without being fully aimed. To be fair, he only had a fraction of a second to get the shot off. But um, yeah, you stopped in the open. Yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake twice. Right, I believe this flank is now secure. Which is just as well, because you need somewhere to run to with um, anything up to four enemy tanks coming in from that direction. But here's the problem. Uh, you kind of have to fight them, because that's your cap circle. And this is very definitely not a machine that can be described as good in a brawl. So he's going to have to hope for two things. One, they're all one-shottable. And two, they're all coming at him one at a time. So far, nobody in the cap circle. Which is encouraging. Well, at least he knows they're all coming from that direction. Although the fact that there's nobody in the cap circle could mean that they're working their way around and they're not all coming at him from one direction. Oh, this could be very, very bad. 3,000 hit points worth of tanks to kill. Which probably means they're not all one-shottable. Oh, no. It has been a while now. They, they could be anywhere. Checking his flanks, checking his rear. Getting very, very nervous here. He's got this rock at least. He's going to have to go for a peek. And there. Oh, hang on, there's a gap there. Perfect. Nice. One down, three to go. Where are the others? They've got a Death Star, a T28 prototype, and an ISU 152. What exactly is the enemy team's thought process here? Okay guys, we're facing a Gorilla 15, it can do 750 average damage, so it's very important that we all stagger our attacks to give him time to reload and one-shot us all between kills. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't all attack him at the same time. Now with 2,100 health remaining, it's theoretically possible that he can one-shot all three enemies. So under these circumstances, a brawl is theoretically winnable as long as he can get the first shot off. And, of course, as long as they all continue to come at him one at a time. If either of those two factors are not true, if they come at him two or three at a time, he's dead. And if one of them has more than 750 health and he doesn't get a very, very lucky damage roll, uh, he's probably dead too, because they've all got the kind of guns that will kill him in two shots. And he's not going to be able to rely on his armour to save him, because he doesn't have any. Where the hell are they? Oh, there's somebody in the gap circle. So who is it? The ISU? The T-28 prototype? The Death Star? Oh, he's spotted. He's spotted. It's the Death Star. Wow, that's a one-shot. Yes! And now the T-28 prototype. Oh, he's got to try to get forward and underneath his gun into the cover of the rocks. And the T-28 prototype is going to need more than one shot. But where's the ISU-152? Well, he's going to have to worry about that later. Although it's possible that the ISU-152 is covering the T-28 prototype in the cap circle, but he's going to need to get two shots. I mean, he can afford to take a hit from the T-28 prototype. Technically, he could afford to take two. Unless the T-28 prototype is smart enough to have switched to the high explosive shells. In which case, it's really going to hurt. Also depends which gun the T-28 prototype has. If we're lucky and it doesn't have the 120mm gun, you might survive this. There he is. Oh, his gun's pointing this way. Ah! It does not have the 120mm gun. It's using the 105. And it's firing on a piercing. <laughs> well, it's definitely going to reload first. But it's not going to do enough damage to kill you. And you only have to hit him twice. One versus one. Where is the ISU-152? Actually, that's a really, really good question. Because he hasn't been spotted the whole game and he doesn't have a single kill. Which suggests he's probably AFK. And with less than two minutes of the battle remaining, Violent Pizza doesn't really have enough time to go searching the whole map for him, so he's hoping that he is AFK and he's still in the cap circle. Although I have seen people, I mean I hesitate to use the word people to describe them, who are not actually AFK, they're just not taking part in the battle, instead they're sitting there in the cap circle, munching on their snacks, waiting for the team to win for them, and in situations like this they go, oh look, there's the last enemy tank, bang, and it's a defeat. But that is not the case today, 
the ISU-152 is AFK. And while nuking the last remaining AFK enemy may look like a really cheap way to get a Kolobanov's medal, you have to understand that you get a Kolobanov's medal for being the last tank alive in your team against five or more enemies and winning. And he was one against six. So even without the contribution of the AFK ISU-152, that would have still been a Kolobanov's medal. So, in no particular order, 8 kills, Top Gun, High Caliber, Defender, Radley Walters medal, Kolobanov's medal, and Ace Tanker for Violent Pizza 25 in the German Tier 10, completely improbable tank destroyer, the Griller 15. Oh, and then there's the small matter of 7,276 damage done to go with the 8 kills and 1,239 base experience. So, and surprisingly, and highly improbably, apparently also, 500 spotting damage. Turns out he's the best scout on the team as well. If Violent Pizza had only thought to stick a broom up his arse while he was at it, he could have swept the map clean for everybody as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Is there no end to this man's talents? Anyway, that's it for today. Violent Pizza, extremely well done. Congratulations on a fantastic result. And I hope you all enjoyed today's video because that's it for today. As always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.